Dear students, uh, welcome and thank you for tuning in uh, to this video uh, with me, Dr. Loyal Zubi. Uh, we are still um, in our Stacks and Dynamics um, class and uh, we are going to start lecture 11. And uh, in this lecture, we are um, continuing our discussion about the force system resultant and we're going to introduce um, the couple and the couple moment and how um, can we determine the moment of a couple, right? And uh, um, so, so we will start with what is a couple, right? Uh, and its forces and uh, what is an equivalent couple. And then we will determine the moment of a couple. And we will uh, look and also into uh, finding the resultant couple uh, moment of multiple, um, you know, um, moments of couple. Of couple. So uh, previously, in the previous uh, lecture, we talked about moments, and uh, we introduced uh, about three or three concepts. So we talked about what is the moment uh, produced by a force uh, about a single point in two dimensions, and we used um, scalar formulation to solve for that moment. And we learned about how to find the moment created by a force about a point in three dimensions using the cross product. And also we learned how to determine the moment of a couple uh, about a line uh, or an axis in three dimensions. And we used um, you know, the dot product and the uh, cross product to create something we call the triple uh, scalar product. So in this lecture, we're going to continue talking about the, the moments and we're going to introduce the couple and uh, what is um, the moment of a couple. So starting with an application. So you will look in, if you're looking into this um, structure and there is a torque or a moment of 12 Newton meter is required to rotate the wheel in the image here. Uh, so you can say that uh, for the image to your left, that, that we are required to um, inter or create a 30 Newton force uh, to move the wheel and place our hands you know, apart with 0.4 meters to create 12 Newton meters. You multiply 30 by 0.4 and that gives you the uh, moment of, of the couple or couple moment. On the image to your right, we have the same structure uh, and we're going to introduce also uh, 12 Newton meters, but now we need to exert more force, which is 40 Newtons, because our hands are closer to each other. So the distance between the forces is smaller, and we have to accommodate for this, the change in the distance or the reduction in the distance by uh, introducing more force. Uh, and this is the explanation why does one of the two grips of the wheel above require less force uh, to rotate the wheel, uh, which is the one to your left, because I have a longer distance between the two forces. So this is an application and you can think of the, you know, uh, moving um, steering wheel of a car as well. So in that uh, sense, so you can see that you have this um, steering wheel and you're trying to turn the wheel to your um, left. Uh, so it's going to be turning uh, counterclockwise. So you have the forces are equal forces, but opposite in directions. And we have a distance perpendicular distance between them. And that's actually the definition of a couple. So, but there isn't a, so when you, uh, when you grip a vehicle steering wheel with both hands and turns, a couple moment is applied to the wheel itself because of the two forces and the distance between them. So I hope that clarified the definition of the couple. Now I have a question. So would older vehicles without power steering have uh, needed larger or smaller steering wheels if we are going to use the same analogy that we talked before? Uh, the answer is that we would like to use uh, steering wheels with uh, larger steering wheels because we need more force, right? And to increase the uh, moment that you're going to create, uh, sorry, we, it's the same force, but you need to create more moment by in, by increasing the uh, distance between the the forces, the couple that we have. Alrighty, so uh, the definition of a couple, as I mentioned before, is defined as two parallel forces 
with the same magnitude but opposite in directions and they have a perpendicular distance which is a smaller distance between the two forces D and uh, we can use one of the forces and you multiply it by the distance and then you have your moment. Keep in mind that in moments we have two things to um, consider. We have something called the direction of the moment and the sense of ro the rotation. So they're two different things. And the direction of the moment is going to be perpendicular to the plane where the force and the distance reside. And the sense of rotation is going to be um, used, it, it can be configured by where is the, how is the uh, system is going to rotate and we can use the right hand rule to identify that. The moment of couple is defined as in scalar uh, analysis as the force multiplied by the distance uh, and in vector analysis it's uh, around, still we're doing it around the point it's r cross f and here r is, is any position vector from the line of action of f to the line of action of minus f and I want you to keep in mind that we are no longer talking about um, the um, distance between uh, the point and the line of action, you know, the line of action of the force. So in the couples, we just care about the uh, distance between the two, uh, uh, the two forces here. And that's why we are going to introduce something called a free vector. So we are this whole analysis is independent of is independent of R A and R B. So the mo this. Uh, couple moment can move anywhere uh, in my system and that's what we, why we call it free uh, vector equivalent couple this is another concept we'd like to understand it's similar to what I mentioned before that we are going to we um, so larger forces are required in the second case to your right here uh, to create the same uh, turning effect which here is going to be uh, so if we want to calculate this is going to be uh, m equals F multiplied by D and the force is 30 multiplied by 0.4 um, and that's going to be, yeah so that's going to be uh, 12 right uh, Newton meters is that correct so 0 0 4 that's 12 so I need the, a larger this is a, a larger force here in this case in order to accommodate for the reduction in the distance but both of them to the right and to the left, they're equivalent couples because they're creating, both of them uh, is creating 12 newton meters. So here, um, so this is case one, and that's case two. Uh, same thing, you have FD, which is uh, 40 multiplied by 0.3, and that's 12 newton meters. So the difference in the distance is uh, going to be uh, considered and, um, you know, modified uh, by the dif distance, uh, the difference in the uh, force. So I hope that clarifies what's an equivalent couple. And uh, we have something, as, as I mentioned before, since we are independent of the uh, position vectors from the point around which we would like to find the moment, the, the moment of the couple, uh, it can move anywhere. So we, it's easy for us to add multiple couples or uh, to find the resultant uh, couple moment. So is the net external effect of a couple is that the net, so the forces because they're equal in the opposite direction, the net force is zero and the magnitude of the couple is actually the multiplication of the force with the distance. If you have multiple couples, you can add them together easily. Uh, if you, you need to, of course, moments are vectors. And you can add the vectors, uh, if they're Cartesian uh, vector or if they are just uh, geometrically. And they can move from one place to another. If you notice in this uh, image, we started uh, our moments one here and one there. Since they are free, because they're independent of the position vectors, uh, we can just move them. So we can move M2 down here. Uh, and then we can have the, find the resultant uh, of the moment. I hope this uh, clarifies what a free vector is and that's what we were talking here about uh, or the couple moment is a free vector so it can be moved from one place to another and it can be added uh, depending on its um, you know Cartesian um, coordinates. Uh, moments due couples can be added together using the same rules of adding vectors so we're good with that.
and we're going to solve problems to show you how to uh, accomplish this. Hopefully that it was helpful in um, introducing what is the couple, what is the moment of a couple, and what is the free vector, and what is the equivalent couples, and how can we find the resultant uh, couple moment. Thank you for watching, and until the next video. Bye.